Today I'm doing the last wrap up for 2020. Stay tuned. to Books with Kimberly. I hope you had a great holiday. Happy New Year to all of you. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share my channel. Today I'm going over the books that I read in the month of December, the last wrap up for 2020. You guys, I read a total of eight books. So let's get into it. The first book, is Anti Up by Christina C. Jones. I give this book 3.5 stars. This book is about the main character, Asha. She works at a casino slash hotel. She loves to gamble. And her goal is to save up $50,000 in order for her to enter a poker contest so that she can hopefully take home the grand prize. She meets King one night playing poker they hook up and comes to find out king is her boss and so this story is about her and king in their weird relationship her brother gets into some trouble and an ex of hers is on her neck and giving her a lot of threats i'm not an urban fiction fan so a lot of that just wasn't intriguing to me so yeah i wasn't really a fan of this one the next book is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Now you guys, I did a standalone review for this book. Go check that out. It takes place in Brooklyn, New York. Sydney is the main character and her neighborhood is going through gentrification at a very rapid pace. That's where the mystery and suspense comes in, is wondering why are all these white people all of a sudden just moving in and the black people are being forced out for mysterious ways. After sitting with it, I really just didn't enjoy it. I like the end a lot, but my overall view of the book, which mm, I wasn't really a fan of it. I appreciated what it did and the topics that it touched on, but I wasn't that big of a fan. I give it like three or four stars. On Goodreads, I gave it four. The next book is Pride, a Pride and Prejudice remix by Ibi Zaboy. This book was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, y'all. It is a spin on the classic Pride and Prejudice. I never read the book. I kind of seen some of the movies. This book has a Afro-Latina spin on it. The main character is Zuri. She is a teenager. It is the summer in Bushwick, Brooklyn. She is so Bushwick. She loves everything about her neighborhood. And it's about her and her four sisters, the Benitez sisters. This neighborhood is going through gentrification. And so um, a family moves across the street, but this is a black family, the Darcy's. So Ansley and Darius Darcy move across the street. Zuri's older sister, Janae, starts to date Ansley. And her and Darius, they have this little bickering thing going on, but you know they're interested in each, in each other. But the Darcy's are from Manhattan and Zuri is so Bushwick. One of my favorite parts is that Zuri wanted to go to an HBCU so she gets on a bus and she visits her dream school, Howard University. So that just brought me back to being a college student and getting prepped up and ready to start school. I did not go to an HBCU, but my family has HBCU ties and I remember visiting my sister on Southern University in Baton Rouge's campus and just seeing everybody who looks like you just it's such a beautiful experience being on HBCU campus and so I love that I got to read that in a book another thing that I really really liked was the Dominican culture was very vibrant in this book it was just beautiful them dancing and giving honor to the spirits to Oshun it was just really cool to read about the Dominican culture I really enjoyed that aspect of it I give this book four stars what kept me from giving it five stars is I just wanted a little something unpredictable to happen. So I just kind of wanted a little something to like, what? Like a little something shocking to kind of jolt my emotions. Y'all know I like a book to bring out the emotions in me. And this was just, this book made me smile though. So I give it four stars, four and a half, because it just made me smile. The next book is His Only Wife by P. 
Peace Adzo Midi. I know I said that name so wrong. But y'all, this book was so good. I give it five stars. This book takes place in Ghana. You get to see that African culture. The main character is Athi. She's getting married and her husband is not there. And the reason her husband is not there and his brother has to stand in is because the brother is in a relationship with this other woman. The Ghanio family hate this woman woman. They put together this marriage as a way to get a fee from the claws of this other woman. They're thinking, okay, now that he's married, he has to honor his wife and leave this girlfriend who is toxic, who keeps him away from his family. The only problem is, y'all, the majority of the story, a fee is living in an apartment while he's living at the house with this woman. And he gives this air that I can't leave because of my daughter. A fee, she gets fed up. And so throughout the book, she is reminding him that look i am your wife i am your only wife you need to be living here with me but this was a really good book and i definitely recommend that y'all read it the next book is the bluest eye by tony morrison this is another book i did a standalone review for i gave it 4.375 stars and basically because there were a parts of it that was a little boring a little drawn out kind of losing my attention but the majority of the book was really really good this book it really revolves around Pecola Bree Love. She's a young child, very dark, described as ugly, and all she wants is to have the bluest eye. She prays for the bluest eye so that she can be pretty. Y'all, this book really touched on how whiteness and, you know, this American standard of beauty really affects black people and black children. This is a really good book. Check out my review. The next book is Dear Emmy Blue by Leah Lewis. I give this book four stars. So this book is considered chick lit. I told y'all in my last wrap up that I wanted to read some more chick lit novels. This book is about white characters. I haven't read a book that was like all white characters in a very long time. This story is about Emmy and Emmy is in love with her best friend y'all. When she was 16 years old she had a balloon and her name and address was on the balloon. She let it go and a few weeks later she got an email from a young boy Lucas telling her that he found her balloon. They sparked up a friendship they have the same birthday so on their 30th birthday the two of them meet together and she's excited thinking Lucas is finally going to ask her to be his girlfriend but no Lucas tells her that he is getting married and he wants her to be his best woman in the wedding and so that had me right there because I'm just like so where is this story gonna go is she gonna break up their relationship is he gonna realize that he loves her like where is this story gonna go and then a brother came into the story and you know i like a little messiness so i was kind of like oh where this brother came from now the brother had a girlfriend too so i was real curious i'm like okay nah i don't see no third man coming into the story so one of these men you about to snatch from their girlfriend and fiance and i was interested in which one she was about to snatch because i knew where the story was going i will say that it was very repetitive there were a lot of things that i'm like she could have like taken that scene out because it wasn't needed to make the story flow i even like fell asleep listening to a part of it and I didn't even go back to see what the part was. And I literally, I mean, I don't know what I missed, but I don't think it was important to the story. So that's why I give it four stars. The next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Reed Jenkins. I give The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo five stars. I really enjoyed this book. It is about a young journalist, Monique. I will start off by saying Taylor G Reed Jenkins is a white author, but her main character, Monique, is biracial. She's black and white. And this story takes place in New York. Monique is a journalist for a fancy magazine. And her editor tells her that Evelyn Hugo, who I, she's giving me Marilyn Monroe, Liz Taylor vibes, just very Hollywood star. 
She was in a lot of movies. She was a sex symbol for years. And this lady is now in her 80s and she asked Monique to come in because she thinks she's doing an article, but come to find out, she wants to tell Monique her life story so that Monique can publish a authorized biography of Evelyn Hugo after Evelyn passes away. And so you guys, we get to just go through the journey of Evelyn Hugo's life from a young girl to her dreaming about being a Hollywood star to her doing whatever it takes to become that Hollywood star. A lot of her marriages, there were seven of them, a lot of her marriages has to do with her trying to get ahead, her trying to get a foot in the door, her wanting to be a star. I really enjoyed this book y'all. You know, it opens up with Monique asking her, so which one of these husbands was the love of your life? And finding out who the love of her life was, it was so interesting. And I think that's what really made me enjoy the stories. I did not see that coming. And it was just a beautiful story. And I really enjoyed it. And I recommend that you guys read it. The last book that I read was a viewer's pick. Shout out to IDD for getting down in the comments of my last wrap up and recommending I read Queen Move by Kennedy Ryan five stars y'all queen move was so good like it was the romance that i wanted there was drama there was messiness there was just steamy scenes there was love there was politics there was natural hair movement it was just so much in this book family scandals so much wrapped into this book and the main part of it was a romance i really enjoyed it it is about kimba and ezra the book starts out going from when they were literal babies to growing up all the way to their 13 years old the two of them are best friends and then at 13 years old Ezra and his family up and leave and they move away. And so the two of them do not reconnect until they are in their 30s. And when they reconnect, y'all, I mean, just the sparks fly. The feelings were there. Because right before Ezra and his family moved, the two of them shared a kiss at the dance. And it was just fireworks. And I was just interested in seeing their little relationship. I thought I was reading a YA book. And y'all know I like YA. So I was here for it. But then it jumps into the future and now Ezra has a son and he's been in a relationship for 10 years, but the two of them break up and right as they break up, here comes Kimba and the feelings, the emotions just ignite. Last video, I told y'all I wanted to read more black men in romance that are emotionally intelligent and y'all, he was just perfect. He was so emotionally intelligent. He just cared for her. He loved her. He was so supportive. He was a great friend. And just that teddy bear that I need. But also, he does have that masculinity, that alpha male thing going. So Ezra was perfect. And Kimba, she was just a force to be reckoned with. Honey was about her business. Thank you for watching another Books with Kimberly video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all, let me know what y'all are reading this month.